to address it. Hello, do you hear me? Uh, okay, great. Uh, my name is Eugene, and I work uh, as a team lead at Scrapping Hub. Uh, I was lucky enough uh, over a few past few years to work in different areas of IT, like uh, games for social networks or collective blog. Uh, again, like Reddit, but uh, just for Russia. Uh, so, uh, major part of uh, my job was to review uh, code, uh, and I might say that readability of tests, uh, as we see it now, is not really good enough. Sorry. Um, but uh, actually, tests are very important to our work. Uh, we can, if we look at uh, top 100 most start projects at uh, GitHub, uh, we can see that 23% of code is located in test, test folders. So uh, this means that if your job is to just read through uh, the code of these projects, that you would spend two hours a day and just reading through tests. And uh, tests became more and more uh, important. Um, if uh, from these uh, 100 uh, projects, uh, 34 projects have revision history as much as five years deep, so we can take a quick uh, look into it. It's a percentage of tests to the code it tests, and we see it's steadily grown. And if we take a look at some absolute metric, like a number of lines of code. We can see that a growth is even more significant. It's uh, from 143,000 of light to nearly half a million lines for just tests. So, uh, if we take a look at uh, some general test, for example, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, this is how uh, uh, most of tests are written, at least uh, the ones that I see. Um, but uh, when we look at it, we can do better job of describing our intent. That means that when other people would read this code, they wouldn't have uh, such question like what this code does. Is this uh, test actually test what it's supposed to, and if there is an error in the, co uh, in the test run, was it because of there is error in the code or because, uh, because test is written wrong? So what actually is test? How can we understand it? Uh, all test consists of three uh, main things. First one is environment environment uh, which we have before we test something. It could be no special environment. Uh, could be fixed date and time. Uh, could be if you're testing some chat service, a uh, VAP profile of user. Uh, uh, another thing is what we actually test. Uh, uh, we can test that to um, multiply by two equals four. Uh, we can calculate uh, yesterday date. Uh, we can uh, make these uh, fictional VIP users try to swear in public channel. And after each event, we have some expectations. This means that we expect that two multiply by two equals four, that yesterday uh, calculated correctly, add that swearing user would be banned no matter of his status. So nearly a, day, uh, a decade ago, uh, father of behavior-driven development, Dan North, published an article where he proposed a given when then template to describe uh, such behavior. Let's take a look at a uh, Wikipedia example. Uh, here, first line describe our environment. We have, uh, we have customer who uh, has bought a sweater from us. We have stock with their sweater. We test that when sweater is return, then uh, it, uh, then number of sweaters at our stock will increase by one. Uh, and this is very, cl uh, very clearly where we see what we have, what we do, 
and what we want to in result. Uh, in behavior driven development, they are write uh, these tests as a text, so managers without any programming experience could uh, write those, or even users. Uh, but, and, but they have additional layer of transforming text to actual code. From benefit from uh, this template, we actually don't need that layer. What we can do is simply extract methods uh, generate an environment to the method uh, which start with the word given. And so the same with when and then. And let's uh, have an example. I showed you this uh, test before. Uh, what we test here uh, is when we registered a logger for Sentry, it doesn't register the same URL twice, so same error wouldn't appear twice in the Sentry itself. Uh, let's take a look what is environment here. Creating logger is an environment, so we move it to a separate method. Same for action. We can see that there is two action. It's a little bit alarming, we talk about it a bit later. And what's results? So now, uh, when we transform code in this way, it's much better to un understandable what it does and what we expected of it. Uh, actually, when we have we, uh, two actions, it's a good alarming sign because we almost never want uh, two actions uh, in our code because we want uh, to check that progressing from one state environment with an action, we get to another state. And when second action we do, we want to generate that previous state, and the first action we just move to a uh, separate test. So uh, I didn't highlight, it, forgot to highlight it, but uh, you can see the second test method self given handler registered. So, uh, this is where we describe what we had at the beginning of this. Also, uh, when we put uh, it in literal words, we can see when something wrong with what we wanted to test. So here, uh, last, uh, last expectation of each test, then number of sentry handlers registered. Actually, what we want instead is to check that every center, sentry handler registered is unique. So um, we move it to another method. Uh, of course, we change behavior of it. I just put it here. Uh, another thing, when users and developers firstly approach this template, uh, they tend to put everything, and I mean everything in the code itself, so it's read correctly. It's kind of again common sense. We don't need this. We have setup. So move common, uh, don't be afraid. You still check up set, uh, setup when you read this. So <clears throat> actually, uh, this is good way to structure single test. But single test is not only our problem in test. Uh, we also want to organize better a test uh, with, with its, mm, I'm sorry. We also, w multiple tests we have better organized. So uh, let's take a look at another example. Uh, if you uh, take a look at every aquarium, it has some equipment. It uh, uh, have uh, environment in it like salt water, fresh water. This is a Dutch aquarium where majority of space is taken by plants. So um, this is kind of like classes. So we, we can uh, take uh, this example. So here is an example of these aquariums. We, and we see that they inherited from each other. And also, we want to check single method. There is a lot of methods could be. Uh, but this method on the top of class, and it's inherited by each, every one of them. So of course, with this aquarium, we have a lot of fish. And usually, uh, when such thing, <clears throat> when it is true, we have tests like this. 
it's a lot of repetition, and I mean a lot. And there are, could be uh, hundreds of cases. For example, if you test in parcel for its uh, extract, uh, removing malicious code from it, there are, actually could be hundreds of cases. So we don't want uh, such long tests. Usually, it's transformed in a loop. So we have an aquarium, and uh, for each data, we loop through it, we check, uh, we do some action, we test. Uh, same, but it's just a little bit better readability. I can't stress enough how bad loops are for testing. Uh, for this particular case, uh, if there is an error with Guppy, you don't know were there errors just with Goopy or with every other fish or with some particular fish. Um, but e this information is very important because you can spend half a day looking into a place where you shouldn't look for this particular problem because the problem is somewhere else and you would see this if you immediately have a results on which test pass, which don't. Uh, here, if for example, we see that tests pass for Guppy and for Goldfish, and don't pass for Raspberry and for Leopold, your train of thoughts could be, what the, how are those connected? Because you thought of something else at the moment. And thinking about it, you would be able to find exact uh, spot which uh, unites those particular problem. So how do we want to translate uh, data to separate test? Uh, I very like NOS parameterized model, uh, which looks like this. And by the way, uh, if you don't know, this month uh, NOS parameterized updates and actually applies not just for NOS, but PyTest and unit test. Uh, so, uh, you transform your test, so test methods now have parameters. You can see after self there is a fish parameter. And you write your code, uh, your data, uh, in a list decora decorating this method. Unfortunately, particular for nose parameterized, there is a problem with inheritance. So if we inherit from freshwater aquarium, freshwater aquarium, and they uh, noticed uh, the different data. So we changed Raspberry for Grammy and we don't test for Leopold. Uh, our expectations could be either we run tests in Dutch Aquarium just for these three particular data, or it unites all of them and Raspberry and Leopold added to uh, the, those three. Unfortunately, what's actually happened is this. We have four tests for each um, aquarium. And what happened here, so you would understand, uh, we have four tests from freshwater aquarium. We re replace three for those we have data. And the last test is just a leftover which is inherited from previous one. So uh, it fails and it's not something. Uh, it should be considered. So what do, how can we apply inheritance to our tests? So our goals uh, would be to have tests parameterized, like nose uh, parameterization like nose is good enough, but it need to be able to deal with inheritance. So inherited test data. Also, we probably don't want to repeat each test each time uh, for uh, the inherited test case. Uh, we want it to be defined in the parent class and seamlessly used in the child cases. And we don't want to apply, we don't always want to apply all the data from parent cases to the child uh, cases. So we need a, a way to control this. Uh, so these goals to, could be uh, related to next environments. For a parameterized parameterization, 
we need to apply single test method to different data, as much data as we want. For inherited test data and inheritance uh, of test itself, what we need to solve this is just an access to parent class and we can extract the data from it. And for control execution, what we want is a way to exclude data. So let's take a look what Python uh, tools uh, and approaches could help us to deal with these goals. Decorator is most important uh, part of parameterization. It's used in every approach which uh, I would show. And unfortunately, usually it's, uh, it's diminished to just create a new function, function which puts some code before or later original function. But being function, uh, function over function decorator is actually uh, transforming original function almost to anything. You could see this, uh, for example, skip if decorator of unit test. It uh, transform original function depending on the condition, either to original function or to skip uh, function that trades the skip. So decorator can be also applied to classes, not only functions. So this is also tr transformation of original class. So how would we apply decorator to uh, achieve those? Uh, uh, Nose parameterized show us very good way to define data. It's clear, it's understandable. So uh, we uh, decorate each test case with, with data that it requires. But only decoration uh, doesn't create multiple tests. So, uh, we need a way to transform uh, this function with assigned data to it to, um, to multiple test cases. So here we just assign to the method data in any way we want. And with second decorator, uh, we take this class. Uh, we have all this uh, methods defining it. And for those methods which defined parameterization, we create additional method. With this approach, uh, we target um, test parameterization, but it's not very good for inheritance. It's applicable because you can do this, but for each class which inherited from this, uh, from this test case, you need again to reapply this decorator for new test because um, uh, what we simply did here is instead of some test case, we created some test case with more methods. It's not applying the behavior to its child cases. Okay. Another approach would be meta class. Uh, which uh, is a way to configure how you create tests. So typical approach is, and we would use typical approach here, is we have a name, we have a basis, which is all parent classes of this particular case, and we have a namespace, uh, which is dictionary of methods, parameters, from which we create this class. So. Uh, we can manipulate uh, with dictionary before we create this class. So uh, we have uh, some tests which have data assigned to it. We iterate from through all of them, and for those we for those who has data, we add some keys and values to this namespace. It's seamless and it is working uh, with inheritance. So uh, when you create uh, a child test cases, this behavior is also transformed there. So mm, 
Unfortunately, with medical, there is also a trade-off. When you, uh, it requires that each meta class is inherited in a direct chain, not a sum tree. So, well, it's not a problem for your single project when you start packaging your things. Uh, when, if there is one meta class in one package and one meta class with another package, and they're not correlating with each other, your users could not be able to deal with them uh, to use both of them. So this approach is useful at some extent, but also uh, yeah, uh, we can also not uh, return some class, but anything we want. So uh, frames is another approach, and it used by nose parameterized. Uh, when you have a traceback, it's it actually listing um, as frames of code, and it's kind of namespaces where cursor is uh, our execution cursor in. So, nose parameterized take uh, a frame from which it uh, its declaration was called, and it it is inject new uh, method there, and also. So it's uh, here namespace would be definition of uh, class test freshwater aquarium. And it's transformed like that. It's, uh, not, uh, it's like we written it this way. I, I'm very, a little bit short of time, uh, so I quickly uh, approach last, uh, uh, last one. Uh, my favorite. Um, ah, before that, here it is very understandable why we can't approach, uh, why we can't get parent uh, from here, uh, because at that very moment we don't have class to get parent from. We are just defining the namespace. So with frames we can't target uh, the parent class. So my favorite one is custom loader of unit test. Uh, loaders are responsible for gathering information, uh, gathering tests from uh, your code and creating uh, suits from, from them. So we don't need uh, actually anything at this point except to mark some tests with data. And uh, we don't have to think about inheritance. Uh, what we have here is something like this. Uh, we get names, we iterate through all of names, and if it has some data, we uh, extend some, uh, we extend our sets. If it's not, we create usual uh, test case class. Actually, uh, worth mentioning that unit test uh, uses loader to create different instances, instances for each test method it has. So it's not one class with a lot of uh, tests, with, with a lot of methods with tests, but a lot of instances for this class which test single method. Uh, sources very straightforward, so uh, you can re read through it and it's very understandable. So, here, uh, what we will do, we decorate data, and when we approach uh, actual uh, test, uh, test run, we create additional tests. We don't change anything into class. We just decide if we want this test, if we don't want this test, or if we uh, create, want to create multiple tests from, from this one. Uh, I didn't uh, mention for previous four approaches uh, control execution, which skip inherit the data. This is because there's two general approaches for them. Uh, one, for those where we have um, access to parent classes, we can cle uh, clearly tell what we want to do with the data from parent classes. We can extend it. 
We can remove some particular data from parent data. We can completely replace it. Another approach uh, which don't uh, need to create uh, different decorators for this is just to insert uh, in your test's body something like Skippy, but I like uh, very much uh, JUnit approach where they have assume. So we can have uh, assume here, so uh, which would go nicely with give and then and when. And it would skip test if it's not applicable uh, as a parent, uh, is a child class. So uh, I want quickly to give some mental experiments. So I would uh, read out loud a uh, few things and you try to get to yourself feelings about it. So it's not related to test, it's just Git and GitHub. Now, SVM. Now, first the bird we had before folders with different approach and changing code live on production. After that, I am very glad that we have Git and GitHub now. And I am very sure that using uh, approaches that I demonstrated today, uh, whatever briefly it was, I'm sorry, uh, would be able for you to create a framework that applied to your particular project that works best for you, that for you and your team, it would be very easy to create tests, it would be no frustration, it would be low maintenance, and you can quickly navigate through it. Thank you. For a, for a couple of questions, if there is oh. anyone. Thank you. Um, first part with the new functions. It looks like BDD, isn't it? Uh, behind drive development. I'm sorry, I didn't. Oh, what, what looks like it? Um, first a part with new function. When you change the part of code with new function with the full name. Uh, you mean organizing it in? Yeah, in yeah, yeah. Given? Yeah. It is actually very easy. It has some. Uh, uh, some current cases, for example, when you want a width patch, so uh, you can approach it simply like um, a patch isn't only can, can be used with width, but it has start and end, so you can create given function and start patching it, and then you uh, stop all started patches in uh, tests. Yeah, but uh, it, it looks like, um, do you know about Cucumber, maybe, something like this frameworks? It's Ruby, probably. Yes, it's, it's behavior-driven <laughs> yeah. development, but it's, it is another layer which, which we actually don't need, because uh, some of our projects are small, very, uh, some, some are not. Um, Cucumber is great, and we can benefit without using, uh, without using, just clarifying what we want to do from our test. Okay, thanks. Thank you for the question. Uh, last question. Okay, thank you. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Hi. So, uh, hi. Uh, how, how you manage, like, if you have a lot of tests, because my previous project ended with having a lot of tests, and uh, how you manage to do not create a lot of functions that just uh, either do BDD, but they do something different underneath, and you know how to maintain a lot of uh, helper code to make the test, because from what you were showing on the slides, you move out something to the different function to have one responsibility, and then you, test is easy. But you know, you. maintaining. So you are worried okay. that test cases would be too long to read and to maintain? Yes. Uh, no. If you have like a lot of test cases, then you will get a lot of uh, copied code because somebody wants to just uh, this one from that, this one from that, this helper code that you know you Thank move you. out. Uh, so uh, 
Oh, you're not only worried for the length of test, but for the length of, sin for the length of single test where you have a lot of uh, them asserts. So uh, from my experience, there is actually no harm to combine those then functions to some uh, single uh, then function. So you would have then user is banned, and in, in this uh, method, you would have then it's deactivated, then it can do this, then it can do this. So you don't put all of this in the test, but you have uh, uh, a data, uh, a test, a method that describe it. So generally what you want to do is to follow the organization of your code. So you organize your code somehow, and it's better to follow same structure in the test. Okay, okay. Kind of answered my question, but probably I will have more. Okay, feel free, of course, to talk to me afterwards. Thank you. Thank you.